Hello and welcome to the show. Straight into the pistol round. Tricks versus preparation. First map in a best of two. And it is going to be Cobblestone. Tricks starting on the CT side. A little bit late starting the game, but we finally made it. So preparation. Arch Gum uh, Jumka, Face Crack, Ubique, and El Botron. <laughs> I do wonder if that is the real name. Versus Hunden team. Haven't seen him in a while. Um, they're, they're actually a, a potential position to stop Godsent from qualifying at the moment. So we'll see how they do. Uh, that's a good start so far on the CT side. Two players down to preparation. Jimko's getting a frag, but the bomb's been lost. Arch taking down Yugi elsewhere. Yeah, respect to see Zed on the pistol round. That's always fun. Okay, this is a little bit, a little bit awkward. Bomb stuck. It's stuck. It's stuck in connector. And they need to go and retrieve it. Not the easiest task. Honestly, I, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know where, you, where you begin in a round like this. Trying to re-enter back through two tight choke points. Well, Arch finds his timing. Not looking good though. Tagged down to 10 now. He needs two instant pops. Two one-shots. That's the way that he wins this round. And that's not going to happen. Tricked. Secure it. Nicely done. And that will be good economy for them. And of course, Nico. It's not Mouse Wars Nico. Not Bosnian Nico. He is Danish Nico. So El Botron is El Patron. <laughs> that is Close his enough. his name. El Patron. Or is it Patron? 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 Whatever. Trick Patron, off to a good start. Mate. Full armor for the CT side. Many players going towards A, it seems. We may see pop flash. Although, although Trick seemed prepared. We've got uh, Yugi holding a Molotov in his hand, just in case. And there it is, deployed immediately. Tricked attention to detail. Always good to see. The entire preparation team is over towards A. But uh, Jumka is waiting late, and it seems they're going to abandon ship. And again, Tricks are very prepared for an anti-eco. That's what we like to see. Visto doing some damage. Going to keep people over towards A. However, there are two towards B. One drop and one getting that early peak over towards the plateau. As you can see, Hunden going for the wide peaks. So, preparation, have decisions to make. Putting three over towards B now. Still tricked in uh, forward positions on both sides. Hunden repositioning now. So Jumka, he may try to cut off rotators. However, the shadow will give his position away. Still no rotation from the CT side. They've got good information. But uh, Maeve's done to one HP. God. Poor Maeve. Doesn't manage to survive. He will be avenged. I think that's okay as well. I mean, tricks they know they're up against Nico now. One of the players who died can buy up an MP9. Potentially. They got some tech nines out of it. Generally, they will be quite happy. Preparation. Let us see how prepared they are. Oh for dear. It's too early for this crap. Oh, we have to get it out of the way with early. And then you get it out of your system straight away. It's the best way to do it. So preparation will make their way towards B with their their pistols, their very inferior Glocks and just a few P250s. Funnily enough, Adi League, we did see round one this way versus rifles. When the T side rushed to plateau and managed to kill five CTs who all had rifles, despite them have themselves having no Kevlar. Anything is possible, Dan, if your heart yeah. is in the right place. That is proof. Proof of its... Although maybe you have to be playing a team from NA, I don't know. For stuff like that, that weird to happen. But preparation, kind of biding their time. Delaying the inevitable. Inevitable. I think we should just wait and watch in silence then. <laughs> I think we should do that. Is that, is that what you want? <laughs> Ooh. Well, now there's something to talk about. Hunden getting taken down. There are two players here. Make it one. Maeve was oh, low no. again. He's not having the, no. the best time in terms of HP. The rotation is here for two men at the very least. And they should be able to stop the plant from going down. Unless you beat can close the distance. Take him by surprise. Straight in the face. Nico not going to like that one. There is a flank coming in from uh, Yugi. They know where he is now. Bomb still in control of preparation. 25 seconds though. They need to take easy, easy tag out. He's the uh, low health player at the moment. But you beat and El Botron going to take 
close down the distance. They don't have time to rotate, so it's uh, easy tag to try and hold this down. Putting the work onto Patron. He's got 24 HP. Make it 4 HP. Nine seconds. They just need one bullet. One bullet will do the job here for you, B. That Deagle. Oh, that was so awkward. That James. Deagle would have taken down either of them. And indeed, Dan, what Why? were you saying before? Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? It wasn't as bad as the other one. Because the other one was there was five CTs all on B with four rifles and everything. But that was still pretty bad. They had three P250s. Two Glocks, and then nothing, and they win the round. How is this allowed to happen? Well, either way, they do have just enough to buy up do Trick to try to stop this situation from unfolding in a way which is any further degree to their detriment. But I'm, I'm. They must be raging after that. They must be raging. Got to move on. Got to move on with FAMASs and UMPs. That is a nice boost, actually. Not a, not a very common angle. Normally, you see people boosted on the box on the right. Face crack, getting some tracer kills there, perhaps. And that's a nice man advantage for preparation. They've got over a minute on the clock, and uh, they've still got good map control with respect of having players over towards both sides. So, a flank is not going to be possible. You know, maybe trick to go for some, some aggression over towards A while all that action was happening towards B, but no such play. Although preparation looks prepared for it, no pun intended. Now East Attack's going to have to look for some information. Catches Patron looking the wrong way, but there's only so much he can do. Pop flash coming in, and he's going to get... That's, that's really, really nice. Isolates Patron. Other two players too far behind to do anything about it. Get fully blind as well. I mean, Patron had enough time to see the flash. Didn't call it, perhaps. And this is a really important match for Godsent for preparation to win, basically, because Tricks are in a position where they could take over or just retain a f more or higher spot and pre prevent Godsent from qualifying. So very important for Godsent that preparation able to go to win against Tricked. And in they go against Maeve. Bomb does go down in the end, but I think like Tricked are fairly comfortable here. However... With the situation as it is, UB can just get some extra damage in. I think preparation should be buying next round regardless. UB just does get the extra kill in the end. So if we have a quick look at the money, we will be able to see the situation here. And indeed, you, uh, you can see that preparation. They're going to have uh, that $1,400 loss bonus, but then on top of that, they're going to get... Going to get $800 to so $2,200. And with a couple players over 5 k I think they should absolutely be buying here with the amount of damage that they did. Because they can just, they can, I mean, as a tease, there's much more argument for it because you can tailor make rounds for the equipment that you have. So if you have a weakness and let's say, oh, we can't get that many rifles, but we can get lots of pistols and lots of grenades, then you can tailor, tailor a round specifically for those strengths. And I mean, one of them could have actually bought an AWP here, for example, but they decided to go with two rifles, a bunch of pistols and grenades, and a fast set piece on B, seemingly. Initial Molotovs coming out of preparation to make sure that the CTs can't get up towards the platform. But look at the damage taken by Jim Crow in this situation. That is quite painful for him. Three of these five players on pistols. And they'll hear grenades being deployed. So Nico going to be prepared for the counter grenade. Down goes Jim Crow, no answer because the rest of his team are behind the smokes. Nico flash, but he can buy this time. Spots the player the track coming in. Headshot though, too many flashbangs coming his way. 3 HP for Facecrack, he can try and go for a front in this smoke. Going for it close to the platform instead. And he will manage to do that. So worst case scenario is being ticked off. More damage being done. That's 2 versus 2. Arch still with a tech 9. But very dangerous with that. He's still close to these players as well. Yeah, that position, that might go unknown if Tricked aren't careful as they get deeper and deeper. This tag does look like he's fairly aware of it. Now the player has been spotted in that position. Arch is known, but the trade comes in. So now things get really, really awkward here for Ace Attack. As he goes for the tap there, doesn't have a kit. This is very, very terrible. It's looking like his chances to win the round are diminishing rapidly as time ticks away. Oh, just playing the hidey, the hide and seek game. Arch will win the round. Wow. And beautiful uh, preparation just I was a little bit worried for them because they went for the... I was worried that they would overcommit with the initial grenades when they were rushing because all the counter grenades came in immediately from Tricked as they tend to. And 
preparation did take quite some damage there, so I was a little bit worried for them that they wouldn't be able to find a way in, but they managed to do it. And Trick now are in a lot of trouble because obviously prep preparation are taking a, a, a lot of momentum, or could potentially take a lot of momentum, so long as they don't fall to this round. So it's, it's their turn now not to mess up against, or mess up in an anti force by type round. So Someone far, standard so set up from the CT side in a situation. And uh, Trix is not having a good time around these smokes, getting tagged on buys and non-buys over towards the B plateau. <coughs> so it seems preparation know their angles in that regard. Four players for preparation moving over towards the A site, making use of the time they have. And it seems Jimka will be uh, making sure no shenanigans are happening over towards the B bomb site, but also showing some presence there when necessary. See some initial <coughs> flashes from preparation towards A. Two players there on the CT side. Some players have Kevlar and a helmet, and that may make the difference if they can get the right engagements. Although it looks like those two CTs are somewhat exposed, kind of stuck in the middle. There's nobody on the low ground, though, to take them out right now. I do wonder if the scout could wallbang through there. Time to go in and face Crack. Ooh, well, living up to his name. Two players left. Nice approach here from preparation. It's It's been really nice to see the level of of their anti-force by here. Quite methodical. And these are names we're familiar with. I, I'm having a mental block on um, oh, what on the team was called. Know. Sorry? No, nothing. Uh, what the team was called. Because it was that was face Crack Ubik. And Jimka, I can't remember what that team was called from before. We, I think we One played the teams. their staff before. Oh, what was the team name? I can't, I really forget. I'm forgetting because they were always like a, a kind of a tier two uh, in a Russian team that sometimes they would you know be able to take a map away from somebody or something, but you never really would see much else than that. But they've been around. They've been around. And they've been around um, with at least at least those three: Face Cracky Beak and Jimka. I'm trying to trying to remember now who the other two uh, were as well. It's been a while, but uh, yeah. So it's not too in, it's not too incredibly surprising for me to see them show that they have you know a bit of a bit of skill in all the the areas that make a good CS team. Strategy, tactics, individual skill, meta game, leadership, and so on. Although I'm not sure who their leader is currently. But they're going to be making their way rapidly down the B plateau. We had actually had a bit of a boost there, I think, in towards drop zone from the CTs to pick up an early kill. But uh, that's where it's going to end. The CT side in an awkward position. They don't know that there's a flank coming in as well, so you might think maybe want to save this armor and AK. He's managed to get the flank, actually. Oh, what? Oh, how's everyone died? To a pistol! Yugi and Maeve with two kills each, but now they're both taggable. And El Patron has picked up an AK. So this is winnable for both sides now. AK versus AK, both players of armor. Maeve just waiting. He could just wait until he hears a plant. But Patron still has time to rotate if he wants to. Maeve realizing this, perhaps moving to an even more passive position. It seems Patron will use the time he has available to him. There we go. That's the information Maeve needs. Smartly walking through the smoke as the bomb gets planted, but it hasn't come out of the bloom just yet. So, this is anyone? I don't know where they both are. Maybe around the rock, but he's exposed, and Patron's going to shoot him straight in the face. It was amazing that Trick suddenly got into that situation in the first place, but preparation just about survived. Yeah, and I like how he threw the deep smoke, because there's so many options there. You know, One of the advantages that he has is the smoke. And you, there's uh, so many ways of throwing it. You know, do you fr throw it uh, close to give yourself an unknown position on the site, or do you try to throw it deep, as he did, or do you try to throw it more to an angle to, towards the right to block off that avenue, forcing it to left? You know, there's so many different spots for it, but you have to hold that fort for now as we do another fast play coming in from team preparation back onto the B rush. Seems to be a bit of a favourite for them, no matter the situation. It's been delivering. Just going to be Yugizan left and. Yugi's in a very bad spot. He's going to have to fall back, try to save the AWP. Bomb has been planted. 
Wow, I was I was not ready for that super fast round. I don't <laughs> I don't think tricks were either. Incredibly fast pace, and that's going to be another round for preparation. This is starting to get a little bit scary for tricks because they can't seem to stop these B plays. Because if, even when let's say they get into close situations, that's kind of a problem as well. You can't you can't always, because that's. That means that preparation are getting into the bomb site. They're getting positioning. They're getting an opportunity to plant. That's th that means that tricked are not defending correctly on the B bomb site, or they're not handling that correctly. They're having too many issues with it. So preparation don't really need to do too much. Uh, different. They can play defaults. They can threaten towards A and always go back to B at different timings. I mean that that could be something that they could go towards again and again until tricked can prove that they can actually adjust. So the money's been ruined on tricked. Once again, and indeed, this does look uh, pretty bad at the moment. This is not the kind of CT start that you need on a map such as Cobblers. So we will watch and find out if he gets any better for them. You get going from aggressive speed, a peak. Oh, too many targets. I mean, his crosshair was close to the guy he was facing. So I think it would have been better to just go for him straight away. Either way, he's still alive. Man down for both sides, and the preparation looks to be moving fast into the B bomb sites. Only three plays here for the CTs because one is still over towards A. Not convinced it's going to be B just yet, perhaps. Now the flank starts from him. But Trick, this is going to be a hard retake. And again, Yugi 13 HP, still carrying the AWP because he's the man with uh, armor, presumably. Might want to make an exit. He's, he's in connector. So he doesn't, he doesn't want to commit unless his team can bring out some frags because obviously Trix will want to save that AWP. So that AWP may be the deciding factor because they're in a more passive position and they don't have a defuse kit. <coughs> it might be that they... Uh, two weapons now. Now Easter Tag just should run away. I think it's more important at this point for him to save weapons than it is for him to kill opponents. Jimka's on the hunt. Even if uh, East Tag goes down in this situation, they, they, they might save a fair few weapons. That's not bad for Trick. They did a lot of damage as well. Only Jimka surviving. So um, <laughs> that's going to be a good good pressure on the T economy, despite the success that the T's are having. It's cool too, because uh, I think preparation is showing that they have quite, uh, quite some routine on this map. I mean, they kind of, like I was talking about, uh, in the previous round, they basically went for another B play. They just changed how the, the open looked. But it all ended up the same, and they've shown also group, like uh, initially a very strong anti-eco, anti-force buy rather towards the A bomb site. So they might start might start going towards that again now, as we can see a lot of players of preparation moving towards the A side of the map, where there is currently only one player. And you know, typically you expect the CTs to have four players towards B early in the round to deal with those fast rush timings, but just to mess with tricks after conditioning uh, conditioning them to all those B plays, having a super fast timing on A would be really fun. This is not a super fast timing, but it's, it is going to work out. Nice opener from face crack, and that's going to cause a rotation. A full rotation, no less. All the CTs trying to stream in. Only one player is by the APC. I think the CTs have seen him. Double Molotov's coming in. Face crack going to crack his face as well. Nico, last man standing now. Tricks can't defend anywhere, it seems. Nico left to run away. Tail between legs. Unhappy dog. And. One would assume those uh, talk sounds means there is a tactical pause coming in. Three to seven. This is a disastrous start for Tricked. Doesn't he? Does he? He does. How do they? It is. They are kind of breaking down all over the place, aren't they? I mean, it's they. They can't seem to defend A or B. There is. There. There's. There this doesn't seem to be an upside to anything. So so far, so it's and they've even lost. They lost a round against three PT50s and two Glocks when they had a buy. <laughs> that is less than ideal, then. On top of everything else, so it, so it is indeed a tricked tactical pause. And my oh my, do they need it? But where do you begin? <laughs> where do you, where do you begin with this? Do you decide to change positions? I mean, you can't really get aggressive, so you have to basically say, you know, what is the problem right now? It's, this is this is basically just. Like they're running a, a virus scan, trying to find find the malware, remove it, <laughs> because there's there is a problem somewhere. Is it somebody missing their shots? Is it lack of uh, some you know some position getting 
pop flashed in. I don't, I don't even know where to begin. They can't hold anything on this map so far. Yeah. Even... It's weird. They've tried to be, you know, have more aggressive holdings behind, even behind the smokes over towards B Plateau. And they've repeatedly been shot through, <coughs> excuse me, not having a good day today, it seems, with my asthma. Uh, repeatedly been shot through the smoke. So that's not going well for them. When preparation push onto the site, they can't hold. A is being overwhelmed. It's it's difficult. I'm curious to see what they will uh, decide to do in response to this aggression. But importantly, they've saved an AK and an AWP from previous rounds. So there we go. Nice deep smoke, which uh, may help. But this is something you see every so often from CT size, but it's still not something you can hold for an extended period of time. So Easter Tag looking to uh, respond after flashes go in towards the drop. It's an interesting approach to that area. It is a headshot angle for both sides. I'm not sure if Face Crack would have seen anything there. Preparation, minute 15 on the clock. Haven't really played or shown any of their hand yet in this particular round. So tricked. Don't really know what to expect at the moment. <coughs> Although it seems they're leaning towards a B play with only one person in A. And Yugi's in a vulnerable, vulnerable position because he's looking at the low ground and the high ground. But he's, he's kind of looking at the low ground and he's kind of looking at the high ground. The only thing he's seen is a flashbang, which will cause him to rotate. He has an Easter tag for support as well, but... Tricks won't know what's going on until very late. And let's bear in mind, Preparation still have a player deep towards B. So if anybody starts to try and get information for Tricks, they may get picked off. And who knows if that will uh, cause a rotation. Ubik coming in for a Ooh. big smoke grenade. I like this. This is really cool. They're trying to fake. They're basically trying to do go for an A fake. Hold the rotation towards A and go for the B push. This is really cool. Actually shows you the level of work that Preparation have on this map. It doesn't look like it's paid off at all. That means they're going to have to shoot their way out of the situation. But it was a nice thought, at the very least. In goes UB, jumping down onto the bomb site. So many CTs all over the place. Finally, it looks like Tricks might have a round. Unless... Well, okay, the time. <laughs> that took it. Uh, that was a good point. That took a long time for preparation there. Um, it did seem that that smoke missed as well. Because I think it, yeah. it, it should have gone to the doors. And it was on the slope. Yeah, I was thinking... Is it going to bounce off the stair? Because that's a very specific smoke if it does. Though it didn't bounce, unfortunately. So I'm, I'm guessing trick to a, a preparation rather, but waiting for a pick. In that situation, waiting for someone to overextend, but it never came. And then they ran out of time <coughs> once they went to plan A. Didn't go to plan. So that's a good boost for Tricked. Now we'll see if they can get anything else going. And again, they've got uh, four people over towards B. And Yugi playing alone, looking at two places <laughs> at the same time, excuse me. At this point, you don't even, I don't think, want if you're a fan of preparation, you don't even want them to go for elaborate plays like that. What they have been doing has been working, and it's been simple. Just move in, you're hitting the shots more consistently than your opponent. Your coordination's been pretty on point, got some nice nays behind it. Just keep to going, doing that, just as we're seeing this round, as they progress up into an A split. And ooh, two play if there's a Molotov at the back of the site, that's going to cause a lot of problems. That causes problems as well. There goes the Molotov. Easter tag forced forward. Being burned from behind. Frag going away to CT though. Another frag. Oh, the two man spray down. That's glorious. Going to get traded, but he's on the work. And Hunter's just charging through the smoke on his own. Three versus one. And uh, he's going to make it work. Headshot to Ubique. So trick surviving numbers. But Easter tag with a great individual play. Although credit to his teammates for. The flashbang's coming out, but holding down the site on his lonesome, very, very important for Tricks. The interesting thing there as well is, I wonder if Preparation will actually realize that they actually had advantages <laughs> there. Because even though the round end ended into like this five versus two for Tricked, I think Preparation got themselves into very good position, very strong positions. They just were a little bit unlucky in that, in that particular instance. So... It, that's definitely a round that they can go back to in the future. They should not be discouraged by how that played out in the end. And uh, that is the skill of it in of itself, you know, assessing how did this really go? Did we get into advantageous positions and and still lose the round? Okay, well that means that maybe we can still do that. That's that's not that doesn't mean that it doesn't work. So 
that said, B has worked for them quite often as well. So will they go back to some B? They've got presence towards A at the same time. So right now it's a little bit obscure for Tricked as to what preparation want to do. Is this really... Is he up? Oh, wow. That is that is crazy. You don't often see a CT in this position. Yeah, I think that just <coughs> shows the desperate measures. Tricked are being forced to uh, go to to get an advantage here against a tough T side preparation. I've been pushing through as well. Two kills for him. They're putting up the big numbers here, these CTs. They're delivering. And now it's uh, Patron versus two. 40 seconds. I'm not sure if Maeve can hear the run into B from his position of Patron. But the Molotov will tell the story. He wants to even up the numbers at the very least before he gets the bomb down. He's got a bit of time to do this. But there's going to be blind spots now because he can't unscope if he doesn't want to give his position away. Which is why he opts for the Tech 9. Nicely done. Yugi misses the shot. He's going to run to A. Oh, this is genius. But Maeve surely knows he hasn't got time. He's not going to get to him before he uh, makes the cross to the site. So the bomb is going to get planted. The open plant as well. So we go back down as well. Both players know where they are. And Patron, he needs to deliver. He's not the one on the M4. He's got one bullet, one chance, and three places. Is he high? Is he left? Is he right? Maeve just biding his time for the time being. Oh, the helmet shows. The shoulder piece is really hard for Patron. He can't do much. He can bait shots, but there are more shots to come because he's got an M4A4. That is super awkward. And uh, Maeve will manage to win the round for his team. Pick up the AWP as well. Getting a reasonable score on the board now, Artrix. The weird thing, though, is that that, sh that should have been a... Uh a one versus three. It's it's one of those spots where players get into this like bloodlust mode. Where it's like, oh, I got a frag. Let's get another frag. Oh, I got another frag. Let's just keep going then. Even you know, ignoring the fact that okay, you you've done your job. You're one versus three now. The guy's got an AWP. He doesn't really have anywhere to go. And by removing and going for another challenge and risking your death at that point, it, it you really put your teammates in an awkward position. As a one, is a one versus two is very different to a two, one versus three. Um, so, it happens. That is the longest grenade I think I've seen thrown in the game of any use. Headshots being delivered from both sides. And uh, preparation not committing to the A uh, B bomb site rather just yet. Arch is in an interesting position. Not sure if the CTs realize this, but they don't have anybody in the drop. So, they have to assume it's compromised at this point. And play around that. No one's going to go for investigation. They didn't really have all the grenades in the world to do that with. And again, Yugi's in a vulnerable position over towards A. Looks the wrong way at the wrong time, and he could get his head taken off. So now it seems Easter Tag and uh, Maeve will start pushing into the drop zone. <coughs> Easter Tag will spot Arch just in time. And uh, with Nico's forward position, they should start rotating towards A, but will they get there fast enough? Looks like it's not going too well here for preparation. The first shot connected by Yugi. There's more to come. Not really too much for Yugi to do in this position. CT's all over the place, and Yugi will hold strong with the 3k. 727, preparation have been stopped in their tracks, and Tricked could even win the half at this rate, which would be quite a nice turnaround. I feel like it's a shame, though, that preparation started to make things a little, a little bit more complicated, especially after the timeout, but... Uh, but it is what it is. And uh, it's down to the Tech Nines again. They've had a lot of success with this. Previously, they when they had success, they went fast w and then waited out the counter grenades, then went slow and then went fast again. So let's see how the pace works out in this round. Had the initial fast push. They are looking like they want to go in straight away though. And there's a CT deep at the end of Plateau. Oh, the nade through, the Molotov through the smoke's gonna be a problem. Hunton's blind, Hunton's dead, he goes below him. Can he hold? There are so many tech knights to deal with that hey, she's gonna definitely help. You beat getting taken down. There goes the bomb as well. So far, so good. Nico putting in more work. Trey did more trades. Juka, Juka goes down, and it's Arch alone versus two. He's got smokes to play with, and a minute 10 on the clock. He can completely abandon the site. Finds Yugi, tries to spray him down. There we go, finally taken down through the corner of the statue. But he has no idea where Mavis spots him, but not fast enough. And that will be the last round. Tricked lead at the end of the first half. Unlikely finish to the half, I've got to say, after the way it started. So Tricked finding uh, some form towards the end. It started out where they could not hold A, they could not hold B, they could not hold against 
Glocks. But now, they could not hold then. Now the transformation after the, the timeout has worked out well for them. So moving into the T side, you'd expect Tricked, I think, to to start to be able to play a little bit uh, a little bit better, I think. I think T, T side cobblestone is always going to be a bit more comfortable. You should assume that, that these days any team any team worth its uh, worth its salt should have the basic set pieces for both bomb sites to execute. And uh, should things go poorly for Tricked here on preparations map pick cobble. They will be moving into Nuke, which is their map pick, and the and Nuke is still the newest. I mean, it's it's the latest addition. A lot of teams are still fairly unprepared on Nuke, so it'll be interesting to see how that dynamic works between these two teams when we get there. But now it's time for the pistol. In that sense, it's good that there isn't another major this year, because there's more time for people to develop Nuke for the next major. Indeed, it is the pistol. Hunden is going to be the nade man for Tricked. Preparation, all Kevlar, no kits, no nothing. Just headshots is what they're looking for. Headshots which are very common indeed. On a pistol round. Now we'll see if Tricks are going to try and identify the setup of the CTs, which is very interesting. Four people towards A, two long, one mid, and one uh, to potentially rotate and have a look at connector. And Ubique's been left alone Lots on his shoulders over towards the B bomb site where Tricks are mostly hanging out. Arch spotting. It might be baiting. He's going to go down, but again, he's got a player in for support in Jimka. He could take these plays by surprise, and face cracks are coming in as well. Hunden somewhat stuck, and this may lead the charge towards B for the remainder of Tricked as there's an instant flank coming in from, pre from preparation. We've got a Patron around the connector area. He's going to get one flag over there. The bomb is rolling down to his feet, and he's going to run out of bullets. Surely can't reload in time. Two players remaining for Tricked. So it's going to be quite interesting to see now if UB can get the shots off because he's in a great position here. Look at this one. With that USP, better ranges, has the box to play with, delaying them so much. He doesn't get any frags here, but okay, there finally there's there's going to be a frag as Easter Tag runs into his position, but that's the problem. Yugi can't plant the bomb. He's going to have to hit the shots now. Oh, he's hitting the shots. That is interesting now. Phrase crack. He's got 15 seconds to hold on now. Yugi has to plant the bomb. Face cracks really close. Yugi has to move forward. He can't. He can't be just playing this game where he's waiting for his uh, opponent to peek. He's got to plant, and there it is. And it's not going to be safe. Got to go for the frag now. Or oh, we can maybe get the frag. Oh no, he doesn't pick the right direction. Oh dear. I feel like some lack of decision decisions being made there by Yugi in time at the very least, uh, cost him that one potentially. Nice recovery initially, though, getting the the, the frags to uh, go to one versus one, but it will be a preparation pistol. T's going for the fourth buy for the most part, save for uh, Nico, just a deagle. Moving early towards A. Preparation with standard numbers towards A and B. No hard reads on this, so we'll just see what comes and then deal with it accordingly, or at least try to. Chumka over towards long A, playing it passively, playing in a position where he can have uh, some opportunity to rotate backwards. He hits him running, and he'll drop a nice nade. Raises his lump for his teammate. There's a full rotation coming in for the CTs. Bit of a crossfire for the uh, CTs with Patron's position around the balcony. One man down so far. More flashes coming in, and the crossfire will pay off. Now the bomb is in absolute no man's land. And people continue to get eliminated. Easter tag surely can't do much. Arch looking in case there's a flank. Maeve last man standing. Three plays have gone down for the T side now. He's picked up a, a Famas. So his position paid off for a brief moment, but he will get wrecked by face crack. An expensive round preparation, but they win the round. Yeah, no no shenanigans like the the previous uh anti force buy after the pistol. Tricked. What do they do? Okay, full, full save, and you won PT-50. Okay, well, we'd expect them to just run and gun, and then promptly die. Death is assured. They'll make it swift. It'll be a swift death. Death is never assured, man. It will be As painless. we've seen on multiple cobblestones. Okay, maybe death is assured. It is, it is quick and painless. It's a matter of time. Preparation of mercy. They're merciful. 
Okay, so Patron with the AWP, and I am quite curious to see how he's going to play that one. Is he going to go for the push on a long and tricked themselves? Will they be looking for that with Yugi? It is something that we've seen lately go amiss for a lot of teams. They've not been checking that all, all well. This round, though, Tricked are putting the majority of their players towards A, but the AWP of... Patron is on A-Long as well, so he's playing fairly passively. He's got a defensive setup with a teammate. like to see this. Jim Kerr, as you can see, he's the man. He's the man. He's, he's the Fonz. The man. Is he, is he the Fonz? Does he have, have a quiff? He's the man. Quiff in a leather jacket. <clears throat> I have both those things, but I'm not suave enough to be compared to the, the Fonz. Minute 14. Now it's a minute 13. Now it's a minute 12. Back to you, Dan. So waiting for the pop flash now, I guess, for Tricked. Where is the pop flash at? You go to pop flash the AWPer, then you can kill the guy on the right. Nope. Where's the flash? There should always be a flash there. James, there was no flash. There was no flash, Dan. But Where? it seems that they have a read as to a potential crossfire situation. Support for the AWPer, so to speak. Hunden. He's going to look the wrong way. He's going to look the right way. He's going to look the wrong way. But uh, the support for Jimka, he's been sold down the river. He's been betrayed. He's been backstabbed. FYI, I am a spy. Face, face crack. Oh, my God. I was scared he wasn't going to see the uh, barrel of the gun immediately. Either way, oh, face crack's in trouble now. The smoke, though. The smoke. He's going to survive courtesy of a smoke. MP9 will prevail. Maeve, can he get the bomb down? He's looking for more frags. He wants to win the round. The bomb plant is not enough for him. But he's running out of time to, to even go for a fake in this situation. He's committing. No, he's going to go for a fake. You beat there, and there is Arch. But there is, there's one more play to find. He has no choice but to commit to the bomb plant now, and he's going to make it. Wallbang is not going to work out there. 19 HP for Maven. He could still do this, but he has no idea where the other player is. Nate's going to do one HP to him. He's found himself a good angle. The sound will give the positions away with face crack and his teammate, but they will win the round. Preparation move to 11. 3k for face crack. Delaying the defuse so his teammate can pick up all the bounty, the booty he can. Booty means different things in the UK than it does in uh, booty in yeah. the US. <coughs> yeah, pirates would call booty, booty as their treasure. Goodies, yeah. Their loots, their swag, yeah. to be their booty. Yeah. The quest for the biggest, biggest booty. Yeah. I was often engaged upon. Have you ever gone on a quest for the biggest booty, Dan? Are you a, a big booty man? Well, if uh, it doesn't require too much effort, then sure. <laughs> well, well, all right then. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to know more about Dan and big booties, just at Google follow it. DDK on just, Twitter. Just Google it. Or, or apparently Google Dan and big booties. Indeed. Or big booty, rather. <coughs> wow, look at this trick. They're going straight up middle. Going for the push. They just this contact playing the hell out of this. And the CTs are getting completely annihilated. They just walked up. They walked all the way. There's a hike. A leisurely hike. Allegedly stroll through the gardens of the chateau. And it has led to this situation. So it seems pr uh, tricks can do to preparation what preparation enjoyed and imposed in the previous half. So you see the money. Preparation will be able to buy. Wait, 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 wait. What is Ubik doing? Is he going for... Uh, I thought he was. I don't know if he had, if he would have had time to defuse there, but there was a chance for him to slip past that player. But I don't think there was no, enough on the clock. I don't think but so I either. like. I feel like he wanted to go for a ninja, but he settled for the kill. So we see the buy from preparation. <clears throat> so this is a, this is a key round for them. It's a key round for both, in fact. There's, there's uh, actually, funny enough, both teams have two, two and a half players with some money. But they're pretty much going to be broke, whoever loses this round. So this is an important round to see 
he will have an opportunity at the very least to string some rounds together thanks to some ecos or, or just crappy buys from one of the two teams. Trick to four players over towards eight, holding passively for the time being. Preparation with two on their side. But again, Patron is, he has an angle down B. So this is information for his team. This allows him to put more people closer to connector to rotate towards A. So slowing it all down once again. But going for the contact into A again. Into A long they go. There's a, that setup is going to be quite telling as, as to who wins this round, I, I feel. He's tagged in the drop zone. And the bomb actually, and most of the players are making their way back to B, in fact. That's an interesting choice there from Tricked. B is going to be problematic with Patron right at the end of Plateau with the AWP. I feel like that is very make or break for preparation. Patron gets that, uh, those couple kills that he should in that position. Should all be over for or over and done with, and there's number one. They lost their man in drop zone as well. Oh, that's the bomb. That's that's surely the round done. 20 seconds left. The round is very done. They might survive with everybody, actually. Yeah, that would be huge for preparation, especially because Tricks would be on minimal loss bonus. And it's an issue when you head back towards B, but you don't have anybody holding the plateau area in that uh, if, you don't, uh, you don't, if you don't have eyes there, often the CTs will have put themselves in very advantageous positions and then you'll end up getting ruined when you head back in that direction as we just witnessed. So tricks now, they're going to be the one with the crap buy. It was an eco or a crap buy, they've chosen the crap buy. So let's see what they can do with it. They, these have worked out for preparation on their T side and it's just about Bedlam and thriving on anarchy. We'll see if they can do that. So Trick, they have have not enough nades, really, to go for a solid set piece. I mean, couple smokes. I mean, you can get a, a nice things. little wall with those. Onto the B-bomb site. Onto that B-bomb site. But we still have the AWP on that B-bomb site. It's uh, El Patron. He is by the chicken coop, currently. The chicken coop. And Hunden is going to be throwing his grenades towards the end of A-Long. So interesting, he's going to try to run a bit of distraction, try to play a bit of a lurk towards the A side of the map. Will his teammates... Looks like they're actually moving back now as well, so... I, I, I suppose, in reality, what all this does is just it creates additional confusion to preparation as to what's actually going on, because after seeing pressure on A from Hunden, there's nothing for quite a while. So... Here we go. We've got Trick now moving up middle, looking for the play. 40 seconds left. Decent amount of time. Yep, that's an important frag as well because Arch could have got the jump on these players and it would have been a triangle of doom with these uh, other fragments for the CT side. But that's two down now. And soon, Ubik will follow. He was already heavily tagged and Patron's wondering what on earth has happened. Again, a crap buy works out for the T side on Cobblestone. And that's the uh, CT loss bonus reset. And uh, perhaps we can have a look at their money. Okay, they can still field a buy, especially if Patron saves his weapon here. He is on a long journey to the palace, but the princess is in another castle. Only this is the second round for the T side so far for Trick. So, I mean, that bodes well long term for preparation. They have a three round lead, soon to be two. Ooh, Hunden. Is, is there a boost coming in from the T's? Or are just messing around in the corner? The okay. I thought maybe it's a, there's some kind of weird yeah. unknown boost. <laughs> yeah. They're all running there. It was weird. But I guess they have to ex exit the bomb uh, radius as well. That'd be really cool if there's like a three-man boost like on overpass right there just specifically to deal with that position. <laughs> you get really next level. That would be the best thing ever. Um, well, it's a, weird, a really weird game actually be between Tricked and Preparation. I don't think either of them can find consistency. Um, tricks have a lot of we're over here now we're over there type strategy on their their T side look at that look at this and look at that so far as it's had mixed results mixed results the 
two three set up here from preparation. Very volatile. Oh, this first frag so important. Surely they can trade on the face crack, and now there's just one man on B. The rotation hasn't even started on A. There's one guy sitting in danger still. Hasn't moved a muscle. So, oh, maybe now I should move, move, move and uh, try to make my way towards B. Arch, Arch. though. Boom. Two Smart. quick kills. Nicely done, but it's still going to be really hard here for the remaining two t uh, CTs coming in. Smoke's off the door position. Hunden's going to go for the plant. Yugi holding angle. Smart smoke from y Jumka. But Yugi can take some pot shots through the smoke, so he still has to be careful about his advance. Here's a gamble after all. Hunden almost forced from his position, but the Molotov won't go exactly where Jumka wanted it to. And then Molotov in return. There are Molotovs in the days here. And there we go. Hunden finally forced, and Jumka will take him down. They know Yugi's around the platform. That smoke's not going to do it. They need to cross, though. Tech 9 coming out. Close quarters. Jumka going, going for the pre fire. Also trying to entertain. And they'll finally get the frag there. Two players surviving for preparation. That is a very tough round for them to win. And again, the money situation continues to be dire for both sides. Just about managing to get the defuse there. Two orps taken into the next round. Going to be big for the team. But uh, with the money on trick, perhaps they go for a fast play. They're going for the fourth buy. They're going for the fourth buy. Yeah, that B rush is really, really likely in a situation like this. Or if it's not a straight up rush, it will likely be a B play after de uh, a delay, delay B play. So preparation should, in a round like this, they should have four players towards B, it, like in the majority of cases, for a good you know, 30, 40 seconds before they rotate one player back towards A. Um, that's because you can, you can expect that. You need to have the players there for the delayed B timing, ideally. It's, it's somewhat of a risk, but it's, it's one of those calculated risks, but this is the most likely play for Tricked in this position. And you can see that here is the delay from Tricked. And you can also see that preparation have over-rotated players away from the B. I, I shouldn't even say over-rotated. They've just rotated players towards A. They, I don't know if they have some weird read or something, but they haven't had any, any information on the map. So this is com a complete gamble to do this. And they have such passive positions on A as well. So those players can't really flank. So yeah, now the now the delayed play comes into the B-bomb site. Oh, this is, this is a bit of a mess for the setup here for preparation. They have to defend with two orbs as well. It's very awkward. There goes Patron, and that's an open B-bomb site. And some nice weaponry for the T-side as well. So indeed, it is awkward. And it seems Tricks aren't done with this game just yet. Not much that preparation can do in this situation, but turn tail. And again, it's another reset bonus bonus, but uh, perhaps their situation is going to be worse going into the next round. Can we see the Mahanes, please? I, I really I really don't understand why they p did the positioning the way they did. After like 15 seconds or 4 on the B, they're like, let's put 3 on A now for some reason, with no information. Just completely going for, for the, for the gam big gamble there. Um, very strange indeed. Especially with two AWPers. It's much easier to have one AWPer play, let's say, a little bit deep. Uh, or rather, a little bit ag aggressively on A, and then have four people sitting on on B. That way, that way, it, when there's rounds like that, we saw uh, Quick do it yesterday. Um, Quick was always like pushing the A side of the map, whilst four of his teammates would stay on B for a good 40 seconds to prevent plays like that from actually having success. That's Quick from Fake Out Nation, yeah. North American team. Two rounds between these two sides, and Preparation managed to eke out another buy. Again, just playing on the lead they have. So uh, we've seen ropey buys from both these sides, but they said to, for both teams, they seem to work more on the T side. And of course, uh, you can play on the Bedlam on the T side, whereas you need the grenades and such. On the CT side, Jim Kurt, that's an important frag that he doesn't get. And they know where the AWP is, so you have to, you have to wonder if he will rotate his position entirely, if he has a read that Trick will be trying to avoid going into an AWP. Although they are quite static at the moment, Tricked. Being very careful indeed, not giving a single sound cue to preparation. Not wanting to give any clues as to what their intentions might be. And preparation are doing basically the same thing. They're moving, well, they almost move face crack in towards into A there without the sufficient information. 
And you gotta be careful like, from with too much movement because you can you can get caught out of position. You need a, a reason to move from your positions. Um, you can't just move willy nilly with no purpose. Nico is going to take down Junker there, pushing forwards onto the A bomb site. There is still a player lurking on the ramp though. It is Arch. He's picked up one frag. Now the hunt begins. They try to take him out. The, the bomber though is very far away from the site, and that is a big risk. I think the bomb even went down. Indeed it did, and it's been picked up. And now it can finally make its way to the site. But that's going to be a slow plant. That's giving the CTs a big opportunity to catch players on the cross as they go for the bomb plant. Maeve though able to do the damage to get the double to close down the round. And that's going to be another one for Trix. So very backwards and forwards between these two teams. I must say. <clears throat> Finally, we're going to have an eco round. It, seems, it feels like it's been a while. Both these teams just been uh, bringing out as much as they can. Easter tag on the MAC-10, which might suggest that there's a good read. Can we see the money very quickly? Yeah, so there's, there, there's a good read that uh, preparation have no money. They're poor, they're broke. They are in poverty. They are below the food line. Can't think of anything else. Chimka goes down towards the A site, as you see there. Everyone else stacked towards B. That is going to pull one player away in Ubik, who's been good with the uh, P250 so far. Tricked with a minute 10 on the clock. And our preparation, they're putting two people per site, but they're slowly moving over towards A. Slowly but surely. Uh, because if there is a lurker, such as Easter Tag, if they run, then he will hear them run. He can make the call to his teammates and they can rotate back towards B. And now he's going to see that the site is clear. So we should see the bomb rotate indeed yet. Yeah, they're starting to move towards B one by one. Slowly. Maybe too slow. And now what is the plan, Tricked? You're halfway to your rotation towards B, and now you're going to go towards A, where the stack is three players. This could be nasty. Yeah, it's all gone a little bit wrong, hasn't it? But they should still be able to easily win this uh, with the grenades at, at their disposal. Nice little molly there at the back of the site. It's going to force another CT out of position. Arch being spotted. Somehow on the run, he makes the frag with the CZ, but that should be all that he has to offer. 13-13 between these two teams. And we're still no closer to really figuring out who is going to be able to take this one. Again, general uh, inconsistency, I think, from both sides. But we are going to be seeing the AWP on Yugi uh, again. Preparation, not really with a lot of money. And they are deciding to go for a tactical pause or to work out what they do Russian. with their money. Because, I mean, no AWP, you, I mean, you can't get aggressive. It's really weird, actually, because... Tricks have not really been showing any any plays which are consistently like preparation when they were on the T side. Well, preparation were like, okay, we can beat you on A, we can beat you on B. There were some clear issues on both bomb sites. But here it doesn't feel like there's an easy issue to pin down for preparation. Yeah, it's a difficult map for both sides. Or difficult match, rather. Maybe more appropriate. And that is a dire money. Interesting, though, that two of the th th five players have bought already so maybe it's more about uh, what the plan is where they're going to put people and so on and about their rotations than about their buy and tricks looks really good here i do wonder if they will go for a fast play you know situations like this where the cts are finally back on the buy but it's a ropey buy they don't have much money you can sometimes see a fast play from a t side so just try and break them immediately try and breach so it could be a fast one into b but then maybe that brings variance to Tricked as well. If they think the slow game, they can drain the utility of these CTs and take that approach instead, then that might prove better for them. So decisions to be made by both sides, not just the ones calling the pause. This is a horrible situation for preparation. I would not like to be here. I mean, it's pretty tense. I mean, it's, a, it is, it's an important game for both Tricked and preparation. But it's a very uh, a very knife edge situation, more so for the CT side, the defending side. Also important for Godsent. Yeah, those two. So I'll be Mo mostly mostly for Godsent. <laughs> yeah, Godsent have failed to qualify for uh, some other leagues, tournaments, lands. Currently playing in London at the moment. 
I mean Birmingham, not London. Birmingham infam infamous for knife crime. As is London. In some ways. Not so much these days, but... Anyway. Moving swiftly on. 13 to 13 preparation. Have some grenades. <laughs> and they will hope that those are going to be the best grenades of all time. Because the utility from Tricked is at maximum capacity. And the movement is there on towards B for Tricked. Looking for those peaks. A slow approach from them. We get the flash in for a peak. That's always very nice. If your teammate flashes you in on top of the orb angle, you get in there. You, in, exactly. Oh, allows you to get information or to take a position at the back. But the flash obviously makes teams, see, uh, these teams wary that, okay, there could be a guy at the back now. And you can see they're checking that. Maeve, though, picking up the kill on towards drop zone. This is really hard now for prep. Arch heavily tagged. Only two players on a B-bomb site, rotation miles away. There are problems for days for preparation. And now the charge comes in from Trick. So far, so good for you, Beak. Arch going to get taken down. He wants that low health, and that's an open site. That's it. That's the round over. The, yeah, this is this is problematic because, okay, so when you lose that first man, I'm always looking at the mini-map and thinking, again, I've seen this time and time again. Whenever Prep lose somebody towards B, especially when they're playing this setup where they've they have got two guys no long and this is like quite late into the round they've spotted nothing towards the a bomb site they're just sat there they don't respond in any sense like one thing you do if you're not sure is you take you put one guy towards the connected doors at the very least and then one guy adjusts his position to go further back into a more passive setup on a so that your rotation is closer and so that if they go through, do go through drop that you can help to cover the the exit through the window through the connector as well with that player like you need some movement there you, you can't just not adjust at all when you lose one man and then have like a 2v5 for your teammates who are on the b-bomb site that's just not cool yeah that's not cool man because it's, it's more or less saying if they push a we're gonna lose if they push b we're going to lose. you got to, you got to adapt there. Also, the other thing, in their position, when you've got worse uh, utility and worse uh, weapons, you also have to say, okay, well, we actually have to take a big gamble here. So you could just say, as soon as they lose a frag, they could rotate almost everybody, or even everybody there. And then let's say maybe you think about saving the weapons into the next round if that is not to play from the seats, after all. Like, but you have to take gambles in, in some of those positions too. So I feel like there's lots of different ways to play this, but it's a bit too static from preparation in how they think about the game so far on the CT side. Their T side seemed a lot better, I think. As expected, I suppose, as a, as a map of Cobblestone, a map that they picked as well. So we have a take of the drop area being proposed by Tricks. But all they commit to it, potentially some retakes coming in. <coughs> Jockeying for position amongst themselves. And there we go. Face crack, almost getting flashed there. Second one will do the job. So that's the drop taken now for Tricked. So what is the preparation response? Again, they've got two players in the same spot towards A-Long. Not really looking for any info. And now we start to see a rotation with the footsteps. Face crack has no idea what's going on. The bomb is down in an awkward spot now. And uh, Face crack is in an even more awkward spot around the smoke, but that may help him out later on, if the, unless they can find it through the smoke. Nico goes down, three versus three, full rotation eventually coming in for preparation. Uh, still one player towards the door, which is about to get smoked off. Problems for the CT side. Yeah, slightly better, could still be better though for preparation on that rotation, but 2v3, there's a chance now, but maybe not. They both get smacked down by East Tag, East Tag, however you said. And Trick now looking to be able to close the map down. And I really felt like preparation, was, I mean, they were leading this map, I think, in many ways for quite some time, but I think they made so many poor decisions on their CT side that, uh, I mean, Trick didn't have the perfect CT side either, but preparation, they, I think they made a lot of poor decisions here that put them into this spot. Um, either way, it's going to be FAMAS, multiple FAMAS is here to try to save the day, and it's cobblestone, it's so annoying when you can't really take aggressive, aggressive risks. And Trick, they... They very rarely go into that that A long setup. Although the time, it's one of the times that they did. They didn't pop flash the, co the the angles that you basically just have to pop flash every time if you're going to take it with multiple players. 
So there could be hope there for preparation. If Pricked don't have all their pot flashes in order, they might be able to use their setup on a long to great effect. Four players towards A for Tricked. And this time, preparation of a third player towards A, looking presumably at the underpass, but also connector. And now he's moving deep. That's face crack. Trying to move to an off angle. Tricked have the uh, the utility to push him from that position, but they're mostly towards long, where maybe this uh, setup from preparation will finally pay off. And there's lots of warning shots coming in. I like this setup. El Patron is going to be the first to peak. Oh, Jim has given his position away now. They were set up. Or maybe he's baiting. Maybe he's baiting. Patron, is he going to be spotted? No kills for him, though. Face crack goes down. Now he's on his own. He's in trouble. The bomb's down. And that's just carnage over towards A long. Three versus two. We've got a full rotation coming in. But it's one by one. Arch on the face burn. And he is going to win the duel. Just about 50 HP for him. Easter tag holding angles while his teammate plants the bomb. I think there's a double there from Yugi. Pretty insane. Now... He's tagged, great position. Oh, you've got to be careful. Take your time on those shots, man. That's it. Arch is dead. Just Yubik. He knows exactly where Yubik is. And it's going to be tough to get it out of that position. Bosh, there it is. Straight in the noggin. And that is going to be the map for Tricked. And they're going to move into their choice, which is Nuke, uh, which is coming up next. But but yeah, I mean, it's it's generally, I, I think for both teams, there's a lot of improvements that they, they can make on Cobblestone, uh, especially on the CT side. But we'll have to see whether or not uh, Nuke looks any different. Yeah, I'm I'm quite looking forward to Nuke. Always enjoy watching it. Well, maybe not always, but a lot of the time. Um, people are people are, are at different levels in that. But after watching Echo Fox, the CT side, I'm curious to see uh, what both these teams have to offer. That's coming up after the break. We will see you back here shortly for game two of this best of two.